do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Frater Atreus Horse with Lance and Growl Priory TTO. And uh, welcome new viewers and welcome back anyone that's been following my series on YouTube. This is uh, episode 17. It's going to be a part one of a two-part special covering the works of Michael Berteau. As I've uh, mentioned before, I've been working on putting together collections of authors and magicians that I feel have been impactful and have added to the uh, cult corpus in the last century or so. So I'm glad to be adding Mr. Berteau's works to the library. In this episode, I'll cover his early works and his Vaudeau system in part two, which will premiere next week, or cover some more recent texts of his. I'm going to rely pretty heavily on the internet here to help me pronounce some things as French is not a language I'm very familiar with, so bear with me. I'll try to be as correct as the internet allows. First off, I'd like to start off with a little short biographical sketch of Mr. Bertal, edited down from his Wikipedia entry, and then we'll get into opening some books. So let's get started. Michael, per Michael Paul Bertal is an American occultist known for his Vodal, Vodal Gnostic workbook, a compendium of various occult lessons and research papers spanning the subfields of voodoo, neopythagoreanism, Thelema and Gnosticism. In 1964, Bertal traveled to Haiti where he was initiated into the system of Haitian Vodal. He settled in Chicago in 1966 where he formed, among other bodies, the Neo-Pythagorean Gnostic Church. Bertal's interpretation of Vodal is strongly influenced by Bartonism, a Francophone occultist society who claimed to inherit from the teachings of Louis-Claude de Saint Martin. Bertal had long been associated with the Ordo Templi Orientis Antiqua, an initiatic Gnostic magical order supposedly founded in 1921 in Haiti by the Gnostic patriarch and Vaudal high priest Lucien Francois Jean Maine. The OTOA tradition comes from the Gnostic Vaudal as practiced in secret societies. There, a synthesis was purportedly developed between European Gnostic Hermetic currents being the heritage of the ancient Western initiatic tradition in Haitian metaphysics. Within the group, the OTOA works through the Monastery of the Seven Rays system. Both of these organizations cooperate with the Gnostic Church Ecclesia Gnostica Spiritualis. La Colvert Noir, the Black Snake, is an independent order founded in 1922, closely cooperating with the OTOA. It is dedicated to the practice and advanced techniques of Gnostic Vaudal a system of Afro-Atlantean magic. Berto's life and occult system are examined in Kenneth Grant's books, Cult of Shadow, Night Side of Eden, Outside the Circles of Time, and Hecate's Fountain. Grant devotes two entire chapters of Cults of the Shadow to a discussion and analysis of Berto's works in La Colvert Noir, as well as a portion of the chapter Afro-Tantric Tarot of the Kalas. Bertal's magical system is complex, including terms unique to himself, such as Meon and Zoetherian energies, but also drawing on magical extensions of the writings of H.P. Lovecraft and the teachings of Aleister Crowley's Awas. Following his retirement, Bertal has focused on his art and writing. I uh, found a little clip of a uh, quote here from Grant Morrison that he gave on a web interview where he says, Bertal is the writer of the Vodal Gnostic Workbook, one of the most baffling, jargon-laden, sci-fi style magical texts I've ever tried to read all in one setting. Bertal may sound spiral-eyed at times, but he is a powerful magician with, he claims, access to plutonium and a plan to mutate volunteers from his group into a post-human insect species. It soon becomes obvious that these wild Voodooid texts are his best attempts to reduce some bizarre transverbal concepts into any kind of language at all. These books are worth persisting with, even if only, for the scene-shifting brain wobble they provide. So, sounds interesting. <laughs> I was, uh, became uh, familiar with Bertal's works, I guess probably about 2008 right around the time of his uh, Vodal Gnostic workbook was republished. 
and uh, recommended by a friend of mine I knew at the time who actually had a rather worn and beat up copy of the a very very rare hardback editions that was put out by Magical Child in 88 but uh, we'll get to that so let's get started with the first first couple of books here on our list tonight I do believe these are the first two I want to get into So for a long time, I thought it was all I knew about was the Low Diagnostic Workbook. And it is indeed a strange tome. But then I, I ran across these first two books as they have been recently reprinted. And Mocha wants to stop by and make an appearance. <laughs> Mocha. Oh dear. Get here all over my, my nice mask. These were uh, oh, recently reprinted here in 2021. Oh, these uh, did not quite. Make it across the pond unscathed. <laughs> but we'll get to that. I stumbled across these, I believe, yeah, from uh, Median Books in the UK. I found the uh, saw the first one of these, which is which they are in the process of republishing. But uh, the first one here is the Monastery of the Seven Rays, the first year course. Uh, a little blurb here. Uh, the Monastery of the Seven Rays is a study course to be read before the Vodal Gnostic Workbook Practicum. It was originally published as a mail order study course and for many years was only available in unauthorized scans and PDFs on the internet. Uh, this was first published in 1967 and it was republished in 2021 by Media Print Editore. As you can see, you can get the kind of uh, ding the hell out of the top corner there. Okay. It was packed well, so I have to assume this was damaged before it got here, but I'm kind of disappointed in that. This is a limited edition. This is number 202. I thought this was an edition of 200. This is the first degree course of the first year. This uh, no table of contents. I believe this one. This one may still be available at Midian. I haven't looked in a couple couple of months. I ordered these about three four months ago, so they've been uh, sitting to the side, waiting for me to get around to making these videos. A good hefty little tome here. Almost uh, 300 pages. This was uh, printed December 2019 in Italy. Again, this is the uh, first year course of the Monastery of the Seven Rays, which is the very beginning of uh, Berto's system. And 
And what made me want to get that is when I saw this, the second year course. Uh, again, we've got a little, it's a little dinged up here on the top corner. We got a little bit of a bend right here that's not going to show on the camera due to the color. A little bend here and this ding up here in the corner. Uh, this is the second year course. This comprises the sex magic system. This one, this one is the one that wanted me, I wanted, so I went ahead and got the first one to get the complete set. Uh, the third and fourth year courses have not been printed yet, so I'm looking forward to getting those. Uh, this sucker sold out in a couple of weeks, so I'm glad to have jumped on it and gotten a copy when I did. This is uh, number 35. I thought these were 200 editions. They may have been the editions of 300. Second year course in sexual magic. This one's not quite as thick as the other one. It's printed on nice paper. It's easy to read. Again, it doesn't have a table of contents. Looking forward to the other uh, two years being published eventually, I hope. I would like to have a complete set of the Seven Rays course. Maybe this one's going to be a little over 200 pages. This was published in 2021. Fascinating. This one, as far as I know, is out of print. So, good luck finding a copy. <laughs> I'm just uh, glad I stumbled upon it when I did. kind of bummed. That's a, that's a pretty good ding right there. I'm kind of disappointed with that. But overall, it shouldn't detract from the value too much. These are going to be super rare being uh, copies of 300 or less. That, of course, is the precursor to the Bodo Gnostic Workbook. This is the expanded edition, which uh, basically is a facsimile of the 1988 edition by Magic Child with a little short preface introduction here. Literally... Uh, a page and a half is what the, forms the expanded edition. Otherwise, it's a just a facsimile of the, the uh, Voodoo Child edition. Uh, I thought that was in here somewhere. No, I guess not. Uh, this was printed in 2007. I think I got my copy in 2008. It is a over 600 page tome. Uh, this edition is only available in paperback. It is still in print and can be purchased from Weezer or Amazon or your favorite occult book retailer. It is still available in print. Probably 
if anyone, if you know or have heard of Michael Berto, this is probably where you where you know him from. And that will lead into another book that is also currently still in print. Pretty a little difficult to open. This is a book. Sijini, Reflections on the Monastery of the Seven Rays by Tao Palamas. This is uh, put out by, this is, I got this off Amazon. It's a nice little hardback. But then I come to find out it's a little publisher. This is the annotated and extended edition. A publisher, I believe they're in uh, Transmutation Publishing. I do believe they're in Colorado. But they have a couple of other works by uh, Tal Palamas here. color you can get this from the publisher oh yeah got my copy off Amazon nice and some uh, full color images here Love the art on the dust jacket. It's, uh, I know I'm kind of OCD about stuff on my mat here. Uh, the two worlds of Vodo and Gnosis merge together within the unique expression of a religious community called the Monastery of the Seven Rays. Having a history that is as colorful and mysterious as the variety of individuals involved in this esoteric movement of the spirit, the monastery stands apart from traditional expressions of monasticism in the East and in the West by existing on a physical plane, but more especially by also being a psycho-spiritual locale, accessible to all who knock upon her celestial doors. For each postulant of the Moston Monastery, there is a particular work to do, a particular gnosis space, to dwell within, and a particular sacred injunction to fulfill for the betterment of the globe. Sijni by Tao Palamas is one such legacy. It is simply the reflections of one student of this delightful and challenging superstructure of mind. Interesting. Yeah, this is, I think this really takes the, uh, ties the other two books together will tie the whole system together once the uh, year three and four are eventually published but uh, I have that uh, next up this doesn't uh, exactly fit in the system anywhere in particular this is some of the Berto's fiction I'm not a hundred percent sure uh, what it's about entirely. Uh, Cagliostro, auto, autobiographia spiritualista. <laughs> this is also by uh, Media Print at the door out of Italy. 
Oh, nice. I did not realize. This is also uh, 300 copies, of which this is 231. I think this is a, some sort of... Uh, Let's say uh, magical autobiography slash record of seances by uh, Birdo. Let's see uh, more of his art. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe Crowley also claimed to be a reincarnation of Count Cagliostro. And to follow that up, Midian books. Here, Cagliostro, Secret Lives, Volume One of Three. And volume two of three. With volume three of three forthcoming. Oh, this is number 59. I do believe this was also limited to 300 copies. This book follows the plan and plot of my previous book, Cagliostro. Autobiographia Spiritutista, and for that reason, it would seem to require some explanation. Oh, nice! That's uh, my birthday. That's my birthday last year, as a matter of fact. Nice, it's good to see. Uh, Berto still out there working and publishing. Let us say that in the previous study, the hero, Alex Cagliostro, appears to have adjusted to the fact of his reincarnation in an adult body in 20th century Chicago, except for one important factor. He does not appear to be a wage-earning member of the contemporary society, so the reader might assume that he has secret sources of income or treasuries of an alchemical origin, and that he has been carried along by the spiritualist movement with the hope, on their part, for an initial period. But really, this is not so, nor does it appear, nor does it really appear that he is able, in a psychic sense, to draw out his previously fabulous powers of occult transformation. Fascinating. We've got more. More Berto's crazy art. What really attracts me to Berto's is not only is his, his uh, really bizarre system that's a conglomeration of basically <laughs> voodoo, western esotericism, and thrown in some H.P. Lovecraft, which puts him uh, up there with Kenneth Grant, but just his art. He's very much an artist. And if you've watched uh, very many of my videos, you know you know I have this thing about the art and science of magic. And the magic of art and science. This is really a nice book. It's uh, very thick covers, thick paper. These fortunately didn't get beat to hell in shipping.
and this is a will be a three volume. This is a number 106. I didn't realize that all of these were. Uh, numbered editions. I really like this book too. I like the format. It's the large format. The paper's really nice. The yeah, typesetting and text is nice. Full of art. Uh, I think uh, Grant Morrison wasn't too far off the path when he said uh, it would definitely be a mighty fuck trying to read and understand these. Uh, this was uh, printed in 2021. Yeah, I do hope the uh, third volume of this and the other two years of uh, Monastery of the Seven Rays course comes out. Soon. With that, uh, Cogliostro here, Sigeny, and of course the one probably most well known, the uh, Vodal Gnostic Workbook. focus on that if you'd like to get a little short pause on that and read fascinating very very interesting I'm very glad to have all of these it's got one of those uh, slicky covers it's really nice I just think this is this consists of the first year and this consists of just the second year and there's uh, two more years a four-year course in the monastery before you even get into the uh, Gnostic word book interesting stuff by a very interesting man uh, we'll conclude part one Episode 1, Part 1 of the uh, Michael Berto series uh, next week. In Part 2, we will pick up with some of his more uh, recent books, modern books. A lot more crazy art and uh, looking forward to it. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and look forward to uh, seeing you in the next episode. Love is the law. Love under will.